All right, folks, it's Fook, and uh, it's Saturday. It's a beautiful day today, but uh, I'm actually doing a little project uh, in Python and uh, data automation and all that because uh, it's one of the things I'm just interested in. So uh, when I have some time, I uh, put a little bit of it towards that. So let me go ahead and show you what I did and how it's going to be uh, useful and, and maybe useful to you. And then I'll share the code as well, and you can grab it and play with it on your own. So uh, before I had this this program, what I had to do is uh, I had to go to my favorite uh, financial site. Usually I'm going to Schwab because that's where my brokerage is. And I'm looking at, you know, a particular stock, looking at their uh, statistics, their financial statistics, and trying to decide if it's a good, a good investment or not. And usually that would involve, you know, com comparing it to other companies in the industry, uh, maybe other companies at large as well in the in the stock market and trying to make that decision. Um, but that's kind of an exercise where you have to do it by hand, one on one, collecting data, you know, whether you're going directly to SEC Edgar and getting all that data or, or whatever. And it was quite tedious. Um, so what I've developed is a Python notebook. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like and how to use it, and then we can actually go and uh, look at the code. But I'll provide the code to uh, my GitHub as well, so you can download it. But basically, all I have to do is provide it with a list of uh, stock symbols. So let's say that we want to look at the FANG stocks. So Facebook, Apple, Amazon, uh, Netflix, Google and Microsoft. All right, so we put in our symbols uh, into our list and then we retrieve the data from Yahoo. So the reason I had Yahoo up was just to show that uh, it's pulling the data from this website. So it's scraping it and it's particularly scraping it from this, this statistics tab, taking the valuation measures as well as all of these uh, financial data points. There's, there are like 59 or 60 data points uh, in all, and it's taking, it's taking all of those and putting them into a data frame that we can then manipulate and do whatever with. So that's where it's pulling the data from. And as soon as I click this uh, button to run that piece of code, you're gonna see a little progress bar here that kind of goes through the six stocks and uh, putting it into a data frame. So. I'm not showing you the code specifically because I just want to run through how it works and then we can just uh, play around with it later. Um, now that we have the actual data, we have to clean it up and combine it and convert the, the types. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then we can go ahead and just display what the data is so we can see what we're working with. So here's what you, you get. It combines it into one data frame and uh, we can then go and manipulate it. So one of the things that you may want to do is just kind of plot certain financial metrics for these companies against each other just to see how they stack up. So let's go ahead and plot one. This is basically showing you quarterly revenue growth on a year over year basis uh, compared to uh, the price to to sales ratio for the trailing 12 months. And then the size of the bubble is uh, the PE. So when we look at this, quarterly revenue growth is on the x-axis and you want to be as far to the right as possible. Price to sales is how expensive the stock is compared to uh, the sales it's generating. And you want that ratio to be as low as possible. So generally you wanna be in this corner um, of the graph right, of the plot. Uh, and then in terms of bubble size, it's the PE itself. The bigger, the bigger the bubble, the higher the PE. So on this far corner where we would want to be, we find Amazon. So Amazon has the best quarterly revenue growth on a year over year basis. And it has a, by comparison, you know, I, I kind of paused there because the, the price to sale ratio is 4.75 on a trailing 12 month basis. And that's not a, a great price to sales ratio generally, but compared to its peer in this group anyways, it's the lowest, right? But that PE, it's 116. So 
that's quite high. And you can see that the bubble is, uh, you know, quite big here compared to, you know, some of the other like Facebook or Google or whatever, right? Um, but why is this useful? It gives me a glance, you know, just in, in one graph, how things compare when I'm comparing different, you know, stocks. And uh, you can make a decision at that point if this is a company that you would like to invest in, uh, given these financial metrics at 116 PE. So only you can decide that. But let me go ahead and just add in another stock just so you can see, because it is quite an outlier. So let's put in Tesla, go through the same exercise. So now we should have seven stocks that we're retrieving and it's doing it in real time. So it's just gonna take a, a second or two. And again, we'll clean the data. We don't have to show the, the data chart again. It's just gonna update it with Tesla. But we can go ahead and replot this. And when I do, what you see is that there is a company that doesn't have a lot of quarterly revenue growth on a year over year basis. It's way to the left, but its price to sale ratio is also essentially off the chart. But more importantly, if you look at the dot size, the bubble size, it's the biggest dot by far. It's uh, 936 PE as of the Friday close. Everybody else is tiny by comparison, right? So it's just an example of when you uh, put a basket of stocks together, you can really see what stands out. Now, the nice thing about this is that I have some tools uh, where I can look at the entire Dow 30, the entire S&P 500. Now, of course, it's gonna take a long time to pull in all of that data, but I can do it on one chart and kind of identify where the bargains are. The other nice thing is that now that I have these metrics, uh, I can combine them and slice and dice them to give me a new metric. So maybe I wanna look at, I don't know, EBITDA over, uh, over debt, right? I mean, I don't know why I would wanna do that, but I can if I wanted to and just essentially make a new variable, right? So let's go ahead and do another case where uh, we're gonna look at like dividend stocks. So not these five right here, they don't pay a dividend. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just change it to like Walmart. We'll do Target. Uh, maybe McDonald's, uh, Coke, and Kimberly Clark, who makes uh, Kleenex and what have you. Uh, how about Royal Bank of Canada? Okay, so we have a mix of companies in here, consumer staples, tech, financials, whatever. Go ahead and retrieve the stock information. Okay, and again, we clean our data. We can run that first chart again and it'll update it with those eight stocks. Okay, so we can look and do our comparison. So here's Target, uh, MCD, McDonald's, Coke, Walmart, and so on. Okay. But because these are all paying dividends, I can also do this chart where I can compare things like the, the payout ratio percent compared to the dividend yield. And then I can look at the bubble size, uh, which shows me the five-year average dividend yield, okay? And I can then make a decision on which dividend stock I would like to invest in, if that's my flavor of investing, right? So these are just two examples. Um, and we'll go into the details of the code. And like I said, I'll share the code as well. But uh, these are two examples where you can just build a chart to quickly look at what's going on with these companies and you can build as many charts as you want to your heart's content. Now, the other thing that we can do is uh, we can pull financial statements for these companies. So for example, I can pull the balance sheet for Apple. So here's the balance sheet going back to September of 2016, right? I can do the same for the income statement and the cash flow. But even more importantly, I can actually pull all of the balance sheets for all of our companies and then show some uh, you know, recent metrics coming from the balance sheet for these companies. So for example, uh, here are all of these companies, has things like 
stockholder equities, total assets, so on and so forth. There, there's a lot of data point. But let's say that we're just interested in something like total assets. Um, you can pull that out. If you were looking at the income statement, uh, you would display it this way. So this shows you the income statement for Apple and so on and so forth. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll get into this quickly, but let's go with the main part. So the first part is uh, the import. Uh, you need to import these modules. And if you don't have them, you'll need to install them into your Python environment. Okay, So that's the first bit of code that we need to run. Uh, in terms of plotting, I like to use Plotly Express versus Matplotlib. Um, some folks like Matplotlib, but I like Plotly because it gives you interactive charts. This is just a Python list, so very simple. And then in terms of the code, to pull data from Yahoo, we're just iterating through that list of companies that we made up here. And for each ticker within that list, we're calling this method from the, high, the Yahoo Stock Info uh, module. Okay? So Yahoo Stock Info was what we imported up here. And we're calling it SI for Stock Info. So I'm just using the get stat valuation for each of those ticker. And then I'm storing that in a uh, ticker stat uh, data frame. Okay, so once I do that for each symbol as I iterate through it, I add that to a data frame that I'm temporarily calling DF1, although you, you still have access to data frame one. Okay, and then I give it some column names that make sense because if you were looking at the raw names, uh, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but this is what it's doing, it's just renaming those columns. And then we're going to go ahead and get the extra stats for each ticker. So again, just to walk you through it. So on the quote page for Amazon, there's this section up here that gives you valuation measure. And then there's this bigger section down below that gives you the financial highlights and, and other statistics, right? So in the code, the first section, the first data frame is is grabbing that first valuation measure section, okay? And then the second data frame I'm calling extra stats, and it's getting all of those uh, financial highlights and other metrics down below. And that's just adding it to a data frame that's called DF2. Moving on to the next section, this is where we are renaming the column name so that uh, it's cleaner. Because what happens is that as we scrape that website, a lot of these names, like this one, for example, has a footnote next to it. So when it's brought into our data frame, it's going to have that little one. So all of these renamed column lines essentially just removes the footnote. So for example, this one right here, percent held by insiders, space one, I'm just renaming it to remove the one, okay? So there's a bunch of renaming. Uh, the next section is converting the data in our data frame because we're scraping from a web page. All of the data is coming in as a string, which is essentially text. So in computer programming, you know, if you know Python and other languages, uh, we have data types. So we have to convert those string values to float so we can do math on them. That's basically all it says. And then this last one, we're going to use the pandas concat function to combine the two data frames. We're essentially merging them into one. And I'm using data frame one and two, and then I'm calling the merge data frame company data. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Oh, I didn't go over these first two lines and I guess I should. Um, when the data frames are built by scraping the website, it comes in in what's known as a long format. So you just get like three columns, right? That contains the ticker, the attribute and the value. Okay, that's this part right here. So it may say something like uh, Apple and then it'll say, uh, 
five-year dividend yield, right? And then it gives you the value. And it does that for every single uh, attribute in just one long column for each stock. So when you, when you scrape the data, you're going to get this very long table. And what this function does is it uses the uh, built-in pivot method to essentially convert the long data frame into a wide data frame, uh, which makes it easier to work with for plotting. So that's really all it's doing. And then this concatenate function at the bottom, this concatenate method, just merge those two into one. All right. Uh, I don't have to show this code. I think it's just one line. It's just the head function for the data frame. And uh, it shows the first five, or is it five? Yeah, it's the first five. If you wanted to see the first, I don't know, uh, 10, you just put 10 in the parentheses. And we don't have 10, so it's just going to show all eight. But uh, you can show as much as you want. All right. In terms of plotting, because we're using Plotly Express, it's pretty simple. We're going to set up a uh, Plotly Express scatter chart, and we're going to provide it the data frame. So we have that company data data frame. And then it's a matter of specifying what columns we're going to chart where. So here I'm charting uh, X as quarterly company uh, revenue growth. And then I have uh, price to sales and they have trailing PE. Okay. And then I gave it a title. Um, the rest of this is just coloring it, setting margins and all of that. And finally, we show the chart. But this is how uh, it's set up. Now, if I want the chart to be a little bit bigger, I can change things like the width. So let's call it 1250 by, I don't know, uh, 700. Okay. So when I play with this, it's going to get a little bit bigger. And if I don't like this uh, gray color in the background, I can change it to something else, like maybe white. Okay, but those are just styling. So now my, my border is gone and it's just white. I can also change the background uh, of the plot. I can change the colors of the bubble, all of that, but I'm not going to go into that because it's not, uh, this tutorial is not about Plotly Express. All right, dividend stock uh, chart is the same and you can build other charts uh, following the same method. Let's go down to the financial statements and take a look at some of the, uh, the methods that's available to us from the Yahoo Finance Stock Info module. So we can get the balance sheet by calling the method called get balance sheet and then providing it with a ticker symbol like this, okay? So all I'm doing here is setting up a data frame variable that I'm calling balance sheet. And then I'm using that module and the get balance sheet method on Apple to actually retrieve the balance sheet information. And then display balance sheet here is just showing the balance sheet. Once you have this, you can then pull out specific pieces of information from the balance sheet and do with it as you will. You can create new data frames, you can do math on it and graph it and whatever to your heart's content, okay? So this is doing it for one stock. If we wanted to grab the balance sheet for all of the stocks, we would have to make an array that kind of holds all of that data. And then we iterate through our company's list and then taking each ticker symbol, we're gonna use that get balance sheet method again uh, for each ticker. And then we're gonna add it to our data frame. Okay. Once you have it, you can display the entire data frame. It's going to look quite messy, but uh, and that's because you're going to have data from different time periods for each of those stocks. But you can get like all of the recent sheets together into one data frame by executing this line of code right here. And that just pulls in all of the recent values into one data sheet. So again, we're gonna iterate through um, everything in the balance sheets, each single item. We're gonna pull the one that has the uh, recent values, and then we're gonna add it to our combined sheet uh, data frame, okay? So once we do that, what we have is a new data frame called combined sheets that has all of our stocks, all of the individual items, and the most recent values for those individual items. 
once you have this data frame, you can do other things with it. But uh, again, I'm not going to go into that because that would make the video way too long. But uh, as an example, if you were interested in, say, total assets, you would get that for all of your companies by executing this line of code. Now, if you're not interested in total assets, but you want something like, say, long-term debt, you can just change total asset to long-term debt, run the code again, and it'll just grab from the data frame just the long-term debt item for each company, okay? Uh, you can see that this is in scientific notation. So this is going to mean that it's 9.18 billion in long-term debt. Because six zero is million, nine zero is a uh, billion. So this is, oh, so it's 10. 10 is going to be 91 billion, right? So you just have to keep that in mind. So Kimberly Clark, uh, it's six times a billion, so 6.24 billion, okay, so on and so forth. All right, for income statement and cash flow, I'm going to go really quick because it's kind of the same as the balance sheet. So for the income statement, there's a method in the stock info module that's called get income statement. So when you uh, run that with a single stock, you can store it into a data frame and then you can show that data frame. So in this case, we did it for Apple. And then we can pull a single line of uh, interest, right? So let me go ahead and just run this. Okay. So let's say that I'm interested only in total revenue. I can go ahead and just look at total revenue. So this is total revenue for Apple for the last four years that it reported. Okay. The same method applies when we're going to iterate through our companies list. So we have eight stocks in there and we're gonna grab the income statements for each one. So we iterate through, we use that same method for each ticker and we store it in uh, income statements, the plural. And again, we combine it using the same piece of code essentially but pulling the most recent values for each item in the income statement and putting it into a new data frame. That's called combined income, and this guy right here. Once we have that, we can then, so let me go ahead and actually run it. You can see how it looks. So we're taking the income statement for each of our stocks in the companies list, and now we're gonna combine it. And now we're gonna display just total revenue. There we go. Now, if I were to, uh, if I was interested in looking at what that combined income data sheet looks like, it's going to be very long, but I can go ahead and just do that and say uh, combined income. So here we go 176 rows of income statement items. And lastly, we have get cash flow, which surprise, you know, not surprisingly, retrieves the cash flow data also from Yahoo stocks. Uh, and it works the same way. So if I wanted to, I can just get the cash flow for Apple. If I want to show the entire cash flow, I can uh, display it. But in this case, I'm just going to show the first 20 items. Okay. And then to combine it, you do the same thing. So you iterate through the list, you store it in a new data frame, and then you can take the most recent, so on and so forth. All right, that was, uh, I'm trying to keep it short, so I'm running, I'm running through things relatively quick, quickly, but I hope that when you see the code and see the examples, uh, that it makes sense, especially if you use Pandas before and, uh, and Python. But if not, Feel free to reach out to me and I will do what I can. I'm going to keep playing around with this, by the way. So uh, the next time I do a video on this, the program may look completely different. But like I said, I'm going to post this, uh, this code on my GitHub and then you can all take a look at it. All right. See ya.